Hallelujah. And welcome to Ornament of Grace Christian Center tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe God will speak to us as he always does. Amen. I thank God that you're not limited to just what I know and what I can do. But when I get up here, amen, hallelujah, God has a word for you, me and you too, hallelujah. So I look forward to seeing and hearing what God is going to say to us tonight, amen? amen, hallelujah. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 is where we're going. We just finished what is the most powerful time of the year usually in Christian churches, amen? The Resurrection Sunday service, amen? Hallelujah. Notice I say Resurrection Sunday. I don't say Easter, amen? Hallelujah. I don't. Hope, I hope not to offend people too much, but maybe a little bit, amen? We don't celebrate Easter. Easter is a Germanic Norse goddess of fertility. Did you ever wonder why it is that we talk about eggs and bunnies at the resurrection of Jesus Christ? It's because of Easter. The celebration of spring and the goddess of fertility. Rabbits are fertile. That's where the rabbits come from. Eggs represent new life. Amen. So that's where that comes from. We don't celebrate Easter. Church should not celebrate Easter. Christians should not celebrate Easter. The word Easter is only in the Bible one time. And that was at the time that they had just killed James and were getting ready to kill Peter. So I don't think that they're talking about celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's just to let you know for next year. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't celebrate Easter. We celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ died for our sins and he rose again. Hallelujah. For our redemption, for our salvation. Hallelujah for our justification. Hallelujah. We're saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Saved. Delivered. Set free. Hallelujah. Redeemed. Hallelujah. Sanctified. But what do I do after I get saved? Mm. After I get saved, it's time to grow up into him. And that's why we're going to Ephesians chapter 4. Tell somebody grow up. Hallelujah. This year we're talking about stretching. Amen. Hallelujah. So part of stretching is growing up into him. Him being the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 7 through 15. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. For those that don't know, the three days that Jesus Christ was in the grave, he was in the lower parts of the earth. He was in the place of the dead. He was in hell preaching. Amen. 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 And he led captivity captive. He led those that received and believed him in hell out of captivity. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that died before he died. Hallelujah. And were waiting for the coming Savior. He went and preached to them and led them out of captivity. Praise Hallelujah. Your and he says he gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles. Apostles are preachers that start and establish churches. They're usually pastors over pastors. Prophets. Prophets are those that point to the future, amen, or point out sinful past to bring people to repentance. Evangelists, evangelists, hallelujah, are those that reach and preach not to churches but to cities to pull people out of hellfire and cause people to come into the body of Christ getting saved. 
Some pastors, pastors lead and love the congregation, amen, hallelujah, teaching them weekly, feeding them, hallelujah, like sheep. And teachers, teachers break down the complex to make it simple. Amen? The Bible says he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Amen? Hallelujah. That's the maturing, the growth. Hallelujah. The perfecting of the saints. The reason God gave the fivefold ministry of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we'll think of this as 5% of the body of Christ, is to develop the other 95% of the body of Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Because there are no big eyes and little U's in the body of Christ. God wants to develop you. Why? Hallelujah. For the work of the ministry. Amen? Hallelujah. The work of the ministry, everybody's part is significant. Everybody was born for a purpose. Everybody, hallelujah, is supposed to do their part for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge, the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, all of us combined, hallelujah, are supposed to be doing the same thing that Jesus did, hallelujah. Unto the knowledge of Jesus, unto a perfect or mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, it's time to grow up. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Every time somebody say something new, we chasing a new preacher, a new, you know, doctrine. No, no, you got to be stable, established, firm, fixed, rooted and grounded in the B-I-B-L-E. Amen. 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 Not tossed, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Tonight, I want to start talking about growing up into him. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King, Jesus Christ. And just to make sure there's no confusion about who him is, amen, hallelujah, him is Jesus Christ. Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is not his last name, amen. Christ is his title, amen. He's the Messiah. He's the one, hallelujah, that the Bible prophesied would come and he came and he did everything he said he was going to do, hallelujah. He fulfilled all the law, hallelujah, and he said it is finished, hallelujah, so that his sacrifice would suffice, hallelujah, to pay the penalty for the sins of man, past, present, and future, amen, is him. It's all about him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's who Jesus Christ is. But for our teaching tonight, him is also a mnemonic or a, what's it called? Acrostic format. H-I-M. Growing up into him. H-I-M. How do I measure my, if I'm growing up? By growing up into H I. How do I know that I'm doing better? How do I know that I'm improving in my walk? I grow up into H-I-M. H is humility. I is integrity. And M is maturity. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. As Christians, we just read that we're supposed to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We shouldn't still be babies. <laughs> My wife was showing me whether they reels or memes or whatever they are, where somebody was going in the streets and they would ask people questions, simple Bible questions. Oh. Ask people simple Bible questions, and most of the people couldn't answer them. He caught one couple that had just come from church <laughs> and asked them some simple questions. Now, they may have, maybe they got a little stage fright because they were put on the spot, but. You know, the Bible says we ought to be able to give an answer for the hope that's in us. Amen? Amen. We should grow to a point where we know who it is we serve, who it is we belong to, why it is we do what we do. We shouldn't stay babies. We should grow up in Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Growing up into Him. Humility, integrity, and maturity are the ways that we can measure our growth. Amen? Amen. Humility. Amen? This is what it says in First. Peter chapter 5 verse 6. It says it in multiple places, but this is the one I'm going to point out. Humility, it says, humble yourself mm -hmm. 
Therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humility is recognizing that without Jesus, you can do nothing. But it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It's recognizing that without him, you can do nothing. But with him, through him, by him, hallelujah, for him, you can do all things. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Humility does is not self-degradation. It's not causing yourself to think down low, little, or light about you. It's not saying, oh, I'm just a low down, dirty sinner. No, humility is realizing that Jesus Christ is the center, the circumference, the base, the boundary, the bounds, the beauty, the sum, the substance, the source, and the supply of my life. Jesus is my source. Everything else is just a resource. Hallelujah. I depend on him. That's humility. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And it says, if I humble myself, God can exalt me. If I give him the credit, hallelujah, then I won't try to steal the glory. And a way that I can tell if I'm growing up is if I learn to be humble. I is integrity. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Integrity is, this is what it says in John chapter 4, verse 23. It says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That word truth is the Greek word aletheia. It means the same on the inside as on the outside. Amen. Hallelujah. Integrity means, hallelujah, not just honesty amen because i can steal something and say i stole it and i'm being honest but integrity means there's some things i just won't do i won't misrepresent the gospel i live in a way hallelujah that represents jesus christ integrity amen my yes means yes my no means no hallelujah i i'm i'm gonna be real all the time what do they say keep it 100 <laughs> I'm going to be 100, 100% of the time. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Doing my best to always be real. I can't be perfect, but I can be real. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about living above reproach. It's not saying that you're sinless. It's saying that you have earned the reputation to say there's some things. No, he wouldn't do that. Amen. That's integrity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. These are things that we need to live in if we're going to grow up in him and M is maturity. And that's what we're going to um that's what we're going to lock down on a little bit tonight. Maturity. I believe I've told you this before, there are ten levels of maturity that Bishop taught us. Level number one. The level of our maturity is the level of our ability to hear from God and step out in faith to obey what he says. That's what we're going to develop tonight, but I'm going to go ahead and give you all 10. Amen. Two, the level of our maturity is the level of our ability to trust in God when things go wrong. When you're mystified and wondering why all this hell is breaking out in your life, yet you trust him. You're like Joe who said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You're like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said, my God can deliver us. My God will deliver us. But even if he don't, we won't, we won't do it. Mm -hmm. nope. I still won't bow down. Nope. I'll continue to trust him, serve him, and love him. Amen. Hallelujah. That's two, to trust God when things go wrong. Three, it's the, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to yield your will. To say, not my will, but thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, not my kingdom come. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, even if I got to do it. Number four, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to endure hardness as a good soldier. Number five, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to forgive. Number six, 
The level of your maturity is the level of your ability to give. Number seven, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to teach what you have been taught. We're talking about growing up into him, H-I-M, humility, integrity, and maturity. Number eight, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to focus on your purpose, to stay in your lane. Number nine, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to keep your mouth shut. So these are all levels that we need to grow up into him, being more like him, amen? My Bible says when Jesus was on the cross, when he could have called down 12 le legions of angels, when he could have spoke a word, hallelujah, and changed the whole outcome, when he could have defended himself, he didn't say a mumbling word. And number 10, the level of your maturity is the level of your ability to let go, to go forward. I spent a lot of time in that introduction, amen, hallelujah. And we'll develop many of those later on during the Bible study. But tonight, we're just gonna focus on number one. What's number one? To hear from God and do what he says. That sounds basic. Mm. But one, first you got to learn how to hear from God. Amen. You know, we just heard that message, amen. Faith comes by hearing, amen. Hearing the Spirit of God speak to you, hallelujah. And that hearing comes by hearing the Word of God being preached to you, amen. Hallelujah. You may have one spiritual ear, but you got two physical ears, amen. You're supposed to hear the Word of God preached and hallelujah into your ears, hallelujah, being good ground that will bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold increase of the word, hallelujah. But the word that you hear through your ears, hallelujah, is also supposed to be accompanied by a word that you hear in your spiritual ear, amen. Hallelujah. You don't just come to church to hear the preacher preach. You come to church, hallelujah, to hear, hallelujah, what the Holy Ghost is saying, amen. Hallelujah. And it's our, a level of our maturity to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying to me individually and, tell somebody and, and, and to step out in faith to do what he says. Let's go to uh, Judges chapter 6. We'll just read all the way down. It says this, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains, and caves, and strongholds. So it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the ground, till thou came come unto Gaza and left no substance or sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. It's talking about a time where Israel was being besieged by the neighboring countries because they had fallen away from a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. They had run and retreated and moved into caves. And the crops that they planted, these neighboring countries came and took all their crops, took all their farm animals, took, they were starving them out. Let me go back, back up to verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Orpher, that pertained unto Joash the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where did all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? And now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. If you know the story, Gideon then begins to rehearse all the things that he thinks are his deficiencies and his inabilities. He said, I come from the smallest tribe, the half tribe, only half of them went in, the half tribe of Manasseh. My family is the poorest family in the smallest tribe in the country, and I'm the least in my family. But God told him to go in his might. What is the might that Gideon displayed? While it's normal to whittle wheat in the threshing floor, he will wheat in the wine press. Sometimes we think it's creativity. Sometimes we think it's thinking out of the box. But the truth of the matter is, it's hearing from God mm -hmm. and then having the faith to do what he says. Any idea that we get, I know we like to think we came up with it. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, there are only two sources right. of information. Amen. You got God and you got the devil. Right. Hallelujah. And we need to be able to, like Gideon, hear from God, hear the unconventional, hear the unusual, do things in a different way, hear from God and obey what he says. He heard from God, and instead of doing things the normal way, because the normal way wasn't working. They were getting all that food taken away as they were doing things the normal way. But he heard from God to do things in an unconventional way. And if I'm going to mature, I need to learn to hear from God and do what he says. It sounds simple. But it's, it is simple. It's hearing from God. Amen. Hallelujah. By hearing his word and praying. Amen. And then trusting in your ability to hear him enough to obey what he says. Amen. That's where ingenuity comes from. That's where creativity comes from. That's where thinking out of the box comes from. It comes from hearing from God. Amen. How many of you have seen, um, what's it called? Um, Men in Black. You remember Men in Black? And uh, they were testing the different candidates to see who it was that was going to join this um, elite um, group that was, you know, supposed to protect the earth from aliens. And they had Marines and soldiers and sailors and police officers and all these different men and women that were supposed to be at the top of their group as far as protectors and fighting people. And they put them in a room and gave them an application and told them to fill out the application. And all the people were sitting up there trying to figure out how to write with no table. And Will Smith went and pulled a table up. <laughs> and that was the test. The test wasn't the paper that they were filling out. The test was, is anybody going to do what seems like common sense? Yeah. Yeah. See, hearing from God. We want to trust in God's ability to speak to us and our ability to hear from him so well that it seems like common sense. So that we do step out in faith to do what he says. Trust what you hear in prayer. Trust what you hear, amen, on the inside of you when God is speaking to you. Trust in your ability to hear enough to do it. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Sometimes we can talk ourselves out of what God is talking us into. And we can allow doubt to creep in and cause us not to think that God wants to speak to us. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to us. I should want to listen. Yes. I want to hear from God and obey what he says. Like Gideon. Gideon had a little doubt. He said, Lord, if it's you, I'm going to lay this fleece out. And if it's wet and the ground is dry, I knew it was you. And God did it. He said, okay, we're good. Well, God, I'm going to flip it over. <laughs> and if the fleece is dry and the ground is wet, then I know it's you. But mature children of the Father, Jesus' sheep that know his voice, we don't have to fleece him. If we're growing up into him, we believe that God wants to speak to us enough that we believe him when he says it. And because we believe it, we obey it. And that's the message tonight. Amen. Trust in what you hear in prayer. Trust in what you hear in the still, small voice. Trust what God says, amen, and hallelujah. See, sometimes it's not a matter of, you know, a prophetic utterance of, you know, thus saith the Lord. And sometimes it's a, a simple thing. But it's trusting in your ability to hear God enough to do what he says. Trusting when God tells you to go right instead of left at an intersection. Trust in when God tells you to go to a certain store. Trust in when God tells you to call somebody and see how they're doing. Trust in, in your ability to hear from God and obey what he says. That's the first level of maturity as we're growing up into him. Bring your vision board back to life with the Vision Workbook. Available now. Contact the Ornament of Grace Christian Center at 913-240-6262. What's up, y'all? It's Royal Gatson with Royal Thoughts Publishing Company, and I would like to introduce to you my first author, Pastor Jerry Gatson. Our success is not measured in an objective. Mm -hmm. Our success is measured in did we continue? Absolutely. Did we do the will? Are we finishing the work? Mm -hmm. Are we continuing what God told us to do? Absolutely. Whatever it is that you feel like God told you to do, stay with it. Don't quit it. Continue. Because mm -hmm. God will be glorified in the end. Absolutely.